Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is a third video in a little set of videos I'm doing that just teach you some basic Kogo skills. Kogo stands for coordinate geometry, and it's what it's kind of the slang term that surveyors use for when they're drafting deeds or maps. So that's taking information on deeds and maps, usually bearings and distances or curve information, and using that to reconstruct geometry in CAD. That's what we mean when we when we say Kogo. So in the last video, we worked on this uh, little road here that we were drawn off the tax assessor's plat, and I wanted to go ahead and finish up some more of that, uh, but I didn't want to take too long in that other video. So we're going to go ahead, now we're going to put in this reverse curve right here with a radius of 237 and 229.57 to get to this point, and um, that's probably as much as we're going to, as we're going to, well, no, we can, you know, we can draw this whole thing, I think. So let's just, this little bulb here. Let's go ahead and we'll try and do that. So let's put in our reverse curve first. So we're going to say create curve from end of object. We're going to grab our center line. Okay, we're going to use the radius. Our curve is to the left, so we're going to enter a negative radius of 237. Okay, and then we're going to use the length of 229.57. All right, that's going to get us up here. Okay, then we've got, they give us a bearing and three distances here. So we got uh, north 68, west 15, 25, and 40. So we're going to put those in real quick. So we're going to use the line from bearing. We'll do this long one first over here. So we've got a bearing of uh, quadrant of 4, bearing of 68, that's 0, 0, 0, 0, and we're going to go 40 feet. Okay, then we're going to go the opposite direction here. Okay, so we got to flop our quadrant. So instead of being quadrant four, we're going to be quadrant two. 68.0000 for the bearing. And then we're going to go, I'm just going to, let's see, we go 15 feet. Then we got one more. I've got to redo that one more time. So we got uh, quadrant two, 68.0000 for the bearing. This time we go 25 feet. And you'll actually see I drew that wrong. So the the uh, tie lines here along the diameter of this cul-de-sac arc actually is at the split between the 15 and the 25. So let's just fix that with our move command. So I actually want to move from right here to right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the center line layer. Oop. And these I'm going to put on the tie lines layer because they're not really a center line. So, Okay, now I want to draw this circle. Okay, and I know this is the diameter, or at least I'm going to assume that. So uh, we're going to use the draw curve from two points, draw arc from two points. So let's try that. that is up here, I believe. You know what, I actually want to circle, two point, circle. Okay. And then I can just, uh, most of the rest of this we can create. Um, we're going to do this with an offset. And then we're going to try and, we'll see if we can get a fillet in here with a 25 foot radius. So let's offset this 25 foot curve here. Okay, and we'll get those on the right layer. I try and keep stuff on the right layer as I go. Just keeps the drawing a little cleaner. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and trim this out, this curve, or this circle. Okay, and I'm actually going to trim this out too. Okay, now we got a 25 foot curve in here. I think we can use the fillet command to do that. Let's try it. So we're going to fillet radius of 25. Yep, it's going to work. All right, and so now we've got a good, we did a good job drawing in this bulb here, okay? All right, we got a few minutes left. I want to come down and show you guys how I would uh, put in this information here for this uh, little uh, kind of fillet and then radius here, chamfer on this uh, APN6. And it's a little tricky because I don't get a distance here or a distance here. So you got to kind of fit this in. And so what we're going to do is uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run in our 25 foot offset here, get this line, and then I'll, I'll show you how we construct this. Okay. That's a little bit, a little bit tricky. So we're going to go ahead and run in our asset of 25. Okay, and then we'll put this on the, uh, we'll put that line on the sideline layer. 
paint. Now I got to get in, get this this corner in. It's got that funky chamfer. So what I want to do is just off in the space, I'm going to draw this little line in this arc, just kind of in space, and then we'll move it into place. Okay. So we'll draw the line first. Okay. And so we're. Oh, let me do line. Sorry. I'm going to do line by bearing. Okay. So my quadrant is. Uh, Let's see. He's got a he's got a quadrant on there southwest, but that's uh that's gonna be northwest. So four, eighty-eight point oh three. Let me try that again. I messed something up. Quadrant four, eighty-eight point oh three is the bearing. Okay, and then we're gonna go um, fifty-two point three one feet. Okay, now we want to draw a curve from the end of that. So we're going to go curve, uh, end of object. Okay, we're going to put in our radius, which is to the right. So it's positive, 30 feet. And we're going to enter a length of 24.38. That's what's on the assessor's plot. Okay, so we just drew this little piece right here. It's two pieces. And now we want to snap it into place. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Kind of, You kind of slide it along. So the first thing I'm going to do First of all, let's just make these a group real quick. Group is kind of a cool command that makes a temporary block. So now I can treat those as an object. So I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snap this up to the line. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to slide it along this line till it touches this other line. And there may be easy ways to do that, but let me just show you how I do it. I just copy this and put it here. Okay, and then I can say move. And I'm going to slide it along this line till I get to the intersection point. All right. And then we can just come in here and trim. All right. And so now we have that. We best fit that shape in here. We wouldn't have to do that if the, if the tax assessor map had distances here. It just doesn't. Okay. So that was a little another little tricky part of that assessor's map uh, that I wanted to show you guys. Okay. All right, let's do, I got a couple minutes, let's do one more thing and then we'll finish up this video. Keep closing this assessor plat. So what I wanna do to wrap up here is we're just gonna draw on this curve right here. So I've got a 40 foot curve at that intersection. And what we wanna do is we just wanna do that the easy way. Not the hard way, so I'm gonna just draw a line down here for now, and I'm gonna extend these two side lines. Okay, and don't worry about it crossing there, that's not a big deal. Because we're gonna flay and get rid of that. So I'm gonna flay radius of 40. Okay, and I'm gonna just redraw this line that I got rid of with my fillet command. Okay, so now I've got that intersection. So we got a good chunk of our road in here from that assessor's plat. Alright, and I showed you guys how to you know, we drew a drew a circle, two point circle here, and flayed in this curve, and you know, did some funky slide along the line stuff over here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Teaching you guys all my tricks, all my Kogo tricks. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and uh, I hope these videos help Austin. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it, and and uh, we'll do some more Kogo stuff as we get time. I hope.